Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial system. We have x squared minus xy equals 14 and y squared plus xy equals 60. And we're going to be solving for x and y values. I'll be presenting two methods even though I'll briefly talk about the third one. So for my first method, I want to use the following. First of all, before I start talking about the first method, I kind of thought about factoring out the x here and then factoring out the y from the second equation. And then I got something like this. Do you think we can do something about this? Maybe dividing both of these equations and hoping to get something meaningful. But anyways, then I changed my mind and I went with the following. Since we have a homogeneous system, we can replace y with something like ux. So changing the variable here. When I replace y with ux, I'm getting x squared minus ux squared equals 14 and u squared x squared plus ux squared equals 60. So that kind of gives me a new system with two variables which is x and u. So we got rid of the y for now. But this is a really nice way of approaching it because if you factor out x squared from both of these equations, you're going to be able to divide these equations side by side. And that's going to give you a, an even better result because x is going to cancel out and we're going to end up with u only. Let's simplify this fraction, write it as 7 over 30 and then cross multiply. Okay. And when we do, we're going to get the following. 7u squared plus 7u equals 30 minus 30u. Okay? So this is a quadratic equation. Let's put everything on the same side. 7u squared plus 37u minus 30 equals 0. Now, you can go ahead and try the quadratic formula, even though the numbers are going to be a little large here. You kind of need to work with them. Or you can try to factor it. Factoring is not that easy. It's easy if you know the x method. So let's talk about the x method. I'm going to draw a big x and then write the product of 7 and negative 30, which is my product here, negative 2, 10, and the sum, which is the coefficient of 37, right here. So my goal is to find two numbers whose product is negative 2, 10 and whose sum is 37. Make sense? So the top number is my product and the other one is the sum. And those numbers are negative 5 and 42. By trying different factors of negative 2, 10, you can find these numbers easily. Now how do I use these numbers? These two numbers are special because they're going to break down the 37. So I'm going to write this as 7u squared minus 5u plus 42u minus 30. And then here I can factor this by grouping, fa factor out as u, 7u minus 5. And then here you can factor out as 6 and 7u minus 5. And this allows you to factor this by grouping 7u minus 5 and u plus 6 equals 0. Great. From here, we get two solutions. One of them is u equals 5 over 7, and the other one is negative 6. You can call them u sub 1 and u sub 2 if you want. But u is what? y is equal to ux, so u is y over x. Right? So if u is 5 over 7, then you can basically write y as 5 over 7x. And if you plug this into one of the equations, let's use the top one. Remember x squared minus xy, x squared minus 5 over 7x squared equals 14. And then this is 2x squared over 7 equals 14. Now 2 goes into 14 7 times, x squared equals 49. It's going to give you two solutions, x equals 7 and x equals negative 7. Since y is 5 sevenths of x. If x is 7, then y is going to be 5. And if x is negative 7, y is going to be negative 5. So those are going to give us two ordered pairs as solutions. All right. 
Are that are those the only solutions? No, because we have another u value that we haven't used yet, right? Which is u equals negative six. So if u, which is y over x, is equal to negative six, then from here we get y equals negative six x. And again, if we plug it into the first equation, x squared minus xy plus 6x squared equals 14. 7x squared equals 14 gives us x squared equals 2. And from here we get two solutions, as you know, x equals root 2 and x equals negative root 2. But you've got to be careful here because y this time is negative 6 times x, so y is going to be negative 6 root 2 if x is root 2. And if x is the opposite, then y is going to be positive, which is 6 root 2. And again, that gives us two ordered pairs, which means we have a total of four solutions. Make sense? Obviously, at the end, we can write all of these as ordered pairs. Alrighty? So far, so good. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the second method and briefly mention the third one. For my second method, this is what I did. I took the first equation and the second one and I added them. And the motivation behind the addition is that xy is going to cancel out. I didn't really think about how this would proceed, but if you just add these, you're going to get something like this. And now what can I do with this, right? Well, I can't really get anything else. I don't know x squared minus y squared. I also thought about subtracting these, but that didn't really give me much. Maybe it would, but anyways, this is what I did. Isolate y squared. And then from here, take square roots. But when you take the square roots, you got to be careful because there's going to be two solutions with a plus minus sign. And this is what I can write y as. Great. So now let's go ahead and plug this into one of the equations. Again, the first one is, I don't know, it looks easier. Numbers are smaller. And then now we're going to replace y with one of these. Which one? Let's use the positive one. But the negative one is going to be very similar. Okay. So if I go ahead and replace y with square root of 74 minus x squared. So I have a radical equation now. Let's go ahead and put the non-radicals on one side and the stuff with the radical on the other side. And then, guess what we're going to do? Square both sides, of course. That's what you do with radical equations almost all the time. And now we get the following. If you square x squared minus 14 by using the formula, going to get x to the fourth minus 28 x squared plus 196 and on the right hand side you're going to get a product x squared times 74 minus x squared which you could distribute and write as 74 x squared minus x to the fourth now if you go ahead and bring the x to the fourth and 74 x squared over to the left hand side and kind of put it together you're going to get 2 x to the fourth minus 102 x squared plus 196 which is already there, equals 0. And obviously, we can divide everything by 2, which is helpful. x to the 4th minus 51 x squared plus 98 equals 0. You might be thinking, is this factorable or can I use the quadratic formula? First of all, this is a quartic, but it's also a biquadratic, which means we can actually find two numbers whose product is 98 and whose sum is negative 51. And those numbers happen to be negative 49, and negative 2. So I can factor this expression as follows. And from here we get, you know, the solutions. x equals 7 and then x equals negative 7. Obviously, x equals 7 is going to produce two y values because we have the plus minus sign, but it's not going to satisfy the equation. So the one that satisfies it is y equals 5. If x is negative 7, y is negative 5. If x is root 2 from here, then y is going to be negative 6 root 2 as before. And if, and if x is negative root 2, y is going to be positive 6 root 2. All right? So those are going to be our ordered pairs one more time. And let's briefly talk about the third method as promised. Now, here's one thing that you could have done. And I guess this would deserve to be the third method. From this equation, I just realized that you can solve for y. Isolate x, y and then divide everything by x, then you're going to get y equals x minus 14 over x. And this can be substituted into one of the equations again. But you've got to be careful because not all solutions are going to satisfy both equations. And obviously, to do this, you don't want to use the first equation because this comes from the first. So you probably want to plug this into either this one 
which came from adding the equations, or the second equation, which was y squared plus xy equals 60. And uh, you could solve for x from here too, but you can just plug this in and solve for it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.